How are you doing? Uh, this is a conversation with Dr. Denz, who oh, is a, uh, a long time friend of the channel. We're talking almost as when I got started. We probably, probably started chatting around 2017 ish. Yeah, before that, I'm going to say, Tyler, I'd say before that, you know, I'm going to say six, 16, mate. I'm going to say 16, I think 2017 was the first Spanibis I went to. Yeah. And yeah, you had air. Um, mm -hmm. And I think I'd got older to say I'd love to meet you. I'd love to meet you because obviously you was the star. You were the star <laughs> in them days, you know what I mean? <laughs> I was the I was the little unknown, unknown, unknown YouTuber, you know what I mean? So How many subs did you have at the time? Was it like early on in the channel, do you reckon? Oh, I bet we, I bet we talked in less than 100. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, no, them were, them were the days, weren't they? Good old days, really. It's a long old time ago now. It's gone really quickly. And then the I following know. year, we just went out to spend a bit together, right? Yeah, we met up together. Yeah, I think we, we did we stop together? We stopped. Yeah, yeah, we've done we stopped. We stopped. We stopped. We stopped. We stopped together. Yeah. Well, I, I think the, the, true, the trueness to that is I tagged along with you and your mates because I think you had an awesome apartment and you had a spare space for it and uh, a spare space. Yeah, we're for it. I come along and I met. Uh, oh, I, went, I remember Paddy. Yeah. Um, and I remember, I remember everyone else, but I don't remember their names to be honest. Yeah, Paddy Leon. They were me, Paddy Leon. Oh, Leon! Yeah, me Leon was there. How's me Leon. It? Me Leon were there. Obviously, he was a man, wasn't he? With a left hand man in them days, wasn't he? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Nicola yeah. still haven't been on one. Still haven't been on one. Haven't they? Get him out. You got to get him out next time. I think. I've told him he's got to come. He's got to come. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. But yeah, we ended up getting that apartment, didn't we, in Basel? Real. Looking at that, um, that wobbly building. What's it called? Wobbly building. It's by the same guy that did the Sangrada Familia, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. What were it? I can't think what it was called. Uh, oh, that's the sort of man of the world. A man of the world. world that I can't remember. In our brain. Lovely, wasn't it? We're lovely. Lovely apartment, mate. Yeah, yeah. It's really nice yeah. going to Barcelona. I think you get a nice change of um, change of scenery, um, and it, it just feels like you're somewhere where it's accepted. You've got the clubs there. Yeah. You've got like just the whole culture side is completely different. I don't think a lot of people watching this would have been to Spain yet for a cannabis holiday like we have. And I, yeah, I highly recommend it if anybody is watching this. The people, well, not if anybody's watching. Obviously, lots of people watch this, but um, the people who do watch this, I'd, yeah, I highly recommend it. Especially come and meet us too as well, isn't it? You know what I mean? Come and say, and I will do to us as well. We always enjoy conversing with people and meeting people. And I must admit, I do enjoy it because Tyler, being being the man he is, he always gets his VIP. So we end up in uh, in <laughs> VIP area thanks to Tyler. You know what I mean? It's no lovely. pressure for the next one. Eh? <laughs> Got to keep it's those lovely. relationships going. That was pretty sweet. So I mean, yeah. So talking about that. So Spanabis 2019, the last Spanabis was when. Um, they basically had like a VIP section overlooking the main span of this. And it was, yeah, it was really, really cool to just be sitting up there having yeah. joints and, and chilling all weekend, wasn't it? Yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. Absolutely loved it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, felt, really a bit, cool, I felt a bit bad at some point when, when some of the lads who knew us were like, get us up there, then. Yeah. I can't. I can't. All weekend <laughs> people were like, look, look, like, I think people weren't happy with me. No. <laughs> sitting up there all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> what can you do though? We can't do it when we're giving VIP tickets. You can't get everybody, can you? No, you know what I mean? It's got to be realistic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have to see that. that might we might not even we'll see how we get on. I mean, we've got a uh, we've got to see whether we get them for next year, mate. <laughs> oh, we're gonna blag them. We're gonna blag them. We have to get them. I'm not. I can't. We, I, I can't go get, down after that. I'm an old man. I'm an old man. I need that. Set, I need that setting to sit down for a minute. You know what I mean? I'm an old man nowadays. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not the case of the VIP. It's the case of, oh, it's got a seat that no one's sat in. That's <laughs> the good thing about it. You know what I mean? Definitely. It was a good area for that, actually. Just yeah, to out. brilliant. Um, loved it, loved it. What a weekend that was, man. So yeah, yeah. We really went into it, didn't we? We just we just really enjoyed ourselves for that whole like span of this two years. Yeah, and then... And, and then we've done it year after year, really, haven't we? All the time, we've always come together now, haven't we? We yeah. always seem to get, yeah, me, you and Strain King, we just get an apartment together and have a good crack, really, don't we? You know what I mean? Yeah. It does end up, like, with a lot of filming over the weekend. If you've got three of you that's got a channel. And, it's, uh, it is a bit crazy. It is a bit crazy, camera. isn't it? Yeah, you're on one yeah. camera after another, and then, like, sometimes you're on two at once. So you've got to, like... 
<laughs> you've got, you've got to be on the ball, haven't you? You've got to be on the ball. <laughs> you really do. You really do. I remember, so I, I, I didn't go out with you guys. To You went to Amsterdam in 2020, right? Yeah, due, last year, last year, yeah. We managed to get there just before Amsterdam locked down. It were, we were really, really lucky because we got when we got there, it were like it were normal. Mm. You know, we were just sat about. It, were, it weren't so busy, which was also really nice. Um, but it were, it just felt normal. It felt before COVID days. And I said to our people in, in coffee shops, I was saying, wow, it's fantastic, you know, we, yeah. to be like this. And then one week after, bang. You literally changed completely. All, 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 all went completely locked down, all coffee shops shut, everything shut week after we were there. So we were extremely lucky there, extremely lucky. And we're on their red list now, aren't we? So even if you wanted to, even if we wanted to book to go out there this weekend, like you, you can't do that because the UK no. would have to quarantine if we went over there. Or can we? Even yeah. There? No, we, I think we can travel there, but I think we've got to quarantine when we get there. Yeah. So no point. And I'm, I mean, you know, I don't want to go into all the bull crap about that, but you know, with jabs and stuff, but it's bonkers, isn't it? It's bonkers. But anyway. The don't new get into normal, that talk, yeah. Tyler. Don't get into that. Talk. No, yeah, sorry, we don't have to delve into that. So I was just thinking of like with Amsterdam. I was thinking like, is there a, like when are we going to be able to get out there, or are there any smoke friendly hotels where it wouldn't matter <laughs> if you're quarantined for ten days? Or, I mean, it actually got to the point in Amsterdam that I had Dutch people or people living in Holland getting hold of me saying, Denzel. Do you know anybody in Holland that, that can get me some? Because we're struggling. We're really, really struggling. Because wow. all Spain, obviously now, everything comes up from Spain. Yeah. And when it when it were all locked down, there was nothing coming from Spain either. So oh, shit, the Dutch, shit. now the Dutch, that's this is the thing. Any Dutch people watching this, you've got to keep growing your own. Because <laughs> you, there's no point importing everything from Spain. Because in times like we are now, You've got to be able to be self-sufficient, haven't you? You know. Uh, yeah, that's a very good point, mate. It's uh, yeah, it's it's crazy out there. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope that. What I really hope, I, I secretly hope that Spanavis was going to be back this September. Now they've cancelled it, so it's not. I was going to make my first, maybe like Madrid trip to to go to yeah. Spanavis. But... Wait, wait, M- Madrid? Is it Madrid? It was Madrid, it, wasn't it? It's in um the the September ones in Madrid, and then the yeah. March yeah. ones in Barcelona. I've never been to yeah. this one, but I still think it'd be really cool to go, you know. It's, uh, yeah, Madrid's a nice very- city, isn't it? I've, I don't, not that I've ever been, but I've, mm. uh, it looks a, a stunner of a city, really, doesn't it? So, yeah. It's, it's, it's and again, it, cool. it's the peop- people that we're we as well, you know, when we're in the good company and we we each other, we, we, it doesn't matter where we are, does it? We're going to have a good oh, yeah. time wherever we are, you know. So, jobs yeah. are good and on that side of it, yeah. I know that you're not going to this. I'm bringing it out. It's a bit, bit cheeky. I know you can't go. But you can't make it because it's your son's birthday. But if you if you do like Spanabis and you're watching this, then the uh, the UK equivalent is Product Earth. And, and basically this year is on the weekend of the 20th of August. And it'll be at the NAEC Arena. I only just learned it's a national agricultural arena, which I think is pretty cool. It's a pretty apt place. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that'll be on. And in, in No, well, I'm good. I'm gutted every single year. It it falls on my son's birthday, so I, I never make it. I never make it. But there is some good ones. I've just been. Uh, I'm in Leeds um, this Saturday. Yeah. And I've just been talking to the organizer, and he's, I just thought, oh no. I said, I said, how am I going to find you? He said, I'll be on main stage. I said, what do you mean main stage? I said, is there a big stage? He said, yeah, yeah, we've got a big stage. I said, and are you wanted me to get on this stage and do a talk? He said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I no. said, and how many people are going to be there? He said, about 2,000. I said, oh, my God. I said, oh, now I'm shitting myself. I'm <laughs> shitting myself now. I said, I will, I said, you know what I'm like? I said, I'll have nothing rehearsed. I said, I'll get up there with a joint and speak whatever comes to my mind. So Brilliant, uh, That's what people want to hear, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, know, you think that it, it might be daunting, but you're... YouTube stats like you're probably more people than that are watching you over all your videos in a day, right? So, so you're still like see like reaching that many people. Yeah, if you look at it, yeah, all, at, all it. at once. Yeah, if you look at all it in their way. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. Well, that's what a few people said. Just imagine in the room. I'm just gonna be. I'll just be nice and just say how pleasant it is to see everybody back out and doing the thing. You know what I mean? It's yeah. great. 
Well, I've just been to the barn dance this weekend. Hello, Ralphie. I've just been to the barn wait, dance. Wait, wait, wait. Before weekend. we do that, I wasn't 100% that you're in the UK now. So <laughs> from your backdrop. <laughs> I've never seen the UK. I've never been in the UK in my life. You could literally be like in like Tenerife or something with that with that backdrop. <laughs> Look at that international man of mystery, our dens. This is it. This is it, Tyler. And you remember what we we're talking about over there? Yeah. Tyler's never actually met me anywhere near England. And he said, he said, do you actually live in England? I said, I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you where I live. I am. Uh, Sometimes in LA, sometimes in Texas, a free sometimes space. all over, mostly Wonderland. Wonderland. <laughs> yeah. We must come over sometimes because you were at the barn dance. So tell, yeah. talk to me about that because I saw, I, funnily enough, did you post your video with Nick with you going to the barn dance after you'd already yeah. got back? I, I saw no, it on it. We going, you know no. Maybe I just no, saw was, it, it showed it to me. We, was on the way, we was on the way to the barn dance. So we did a, like we did in America, we did a bit of a road trip type thing. Um, just to show some of the beautiful countryside, you know, because a lot of the people, um, you know, 50% of the people who watch my channel aren't from the UK. Mm. And they don't know, even though I'm not from the UK, uh, they don't know um, a lot of these areas. And, we, you know, I'm so lucky to live around where I live. So I just thought I'd do a bit more there, video there. But I couldn't video inside due to the fact they were DJs playing music. Oh, was that why? Yeah, because you get yeah. Like, copyright comes right down on you now, doesn't it? Straight away yeah. now. We can't do, we can't do anything with copyright now. So I just thought I can't. I, I knew if if I did film inside, it had just been bumped from straight away. So yeah, yeah. I just thought no, there's no point. I, I've you know, I've seen a bit, and there's a few lads put other videos up there as well. So, but really good dude. Do about hundred people, hundred and fifty people or something. Nice, nice, chilled out, relaxed. But it's always it's one of my favourite events. It's always really, really nice, really, really nice people, really, really chilled out. Beautiful area of the world. Um and a beautiful place where where the event is, you know, it's really is good. But uh I can tell I'm getting old. I'm still rough today. I am still <laughs> rough today. Uh, I'm nice to go, mate. <laughs> I know. Well, I refuse. I, I, said I refuse to go to bed until it goes daylight. Um, <laughs> wow, that welcome. That to is shape a rule of fun, I had to stop up. It was daylight, but it's not a good thing to go to bed when you're when you're in a tent in daylight. No, that's so, the thing. Yeah. You can't you can't really sleep once that light comes in. Is that's what normally wakes me up, and then the heat comes with it as well, doesn't and it? And all and all the ones that went to bed earlier, as soon as the sun came up, they were all getting up. So I had a total of zero hours sleep, which is <laughs> I've not done that for a long time, to be truthful. That, I'm I mean, feeling, yeah, I don't I'm, I don't like drawing attention to your age, mate. But it definitely doesn't get any easier as you get. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> without a doubt, mate. Without a doubt, age. Yeah. Well, if you look back early on my you know, four or five years ago on my YouTube channel, I look a lot younger than I do now and all that. <laughs> I certainly look a lot younger. And so do you on your videos. I've took oh, down look at your old videos. I've and, tried to go yeah. back to it. I don't know if you've noticed, I've cut the beard off in an attempt yeah. to, uh, to try and reclaim some of my youth because I thought... Well, like I say, when I talked to you the other day, I were, I were looking and I thought, why does he look different? And I thought, beard's gone. His beard's <laughs> gone. That's what it is there. It's yeah. His beard's gone. But you can't escape age, mate. It's, uh, it's always coming for you. Like I shaved the beard off and then I've got loads of white hairs growing back. <laughs> and they well, weren't white when I shaved beard. them off. Well, I'm going big white sardies at the minute. I'm going to go some big white sardies, get some big lamb chops on go all that, you know. Nice. So, yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. yeah. Yeah. I like my white beard. I, get, I remind myself of Father Christmas. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's nice. If you start it now, it might be ready for, uh, might be ready for December. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I need to get it ready. I need to get it ready for me, for me delivering the presents, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Another thing I wanted to talk to you about in, in the chat today, mate, was we, we kind of, we smoke very different weed. So basically, I think from being in different areas, we get very different stuff and, and sometimes it crosses over, but that's almost like a, a passion of the person who's made it where they've they've reached out to both of us. So, so I do find, though, very, very... Often, well, you'll you know yourself. We we even though we are smoking different people's bud, we seem often to be smoking the same strain of bud. When we do the reviews, yeah, I often ring Tyler up and say, "Bloody hell, 
I've just noticed you put that up there and I was just going to do it. Right, I'll swap, I'll change and do another one. So, again, a lot of you, a lot of the subscribers who watch both of us channels won't realise that we do converse with each other. So, yeah. the public, you know, your people who are watching yourselves don't get sick and tired of watching the same stuff. We do we do converse <laughs> with each other, don't we? You know, to say, right, I've done that, you do that, what it was, you know. Yeah, and like, yeah, I mean, that's that's the thing. We'd never step on each other's toes anyway, but you're right. We no. don't want to both be bringing out the same review of the same strain on the same day, you know. It's, it's, no. It definitely helps to be in touch about that. But I was I was thinking more about sort of what your daily smoke is. So, so yeah, I know we do, we've reviewed some of the same stuff, but, but you've gone through a phase, I don't know if you're still in it, correct, like, let me know, but but where you were smoking a lot of Jungle Boys stuff, where you had a lot of, like, Cali and, and American... I haven't, I, haven't smoked, I haven't smoked any Cali for nearly two years. Well, wow. probably two years or more, due to the fact I just don't believe that 90% of what is Cali in the UK is not Cali. Where it it's not Cali. Cali. Mm. I used to get I used to get Cali coming over from California. I knew it was coming over. I I sorted it out. Yeah, yeah. I used to send me Griffin, so I knew it was collecting that stuff. And I used to open a packet and I used to go, check that out. Yeah. Now I open packets that are meant to be Californian. They look good, but I'm not going like that anymore. I mean, I've actually brought some here while I'm sat here. I thought we obviously we're talking about uh, weed and stuff, but this stuff here. Yeah, Apple Fritter from uh, Mad Dabud. <laughs> Can't say. It. <laughs> Sorry, quick cheeky plug. He's getting. Uh, I've just met this guy this weekend, so yeah. he's getting. A, he's getting a cheeky plug. Mm. Um, but I had apple fritters off uh, Lumpies in California. Now I know Lumpies, and I speak to Lumpies, and their quality of 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 bud is exceptional exceptional it really is up there but i saw these and uk absolutely i'm finding now that when i open uk's and things like that the smells of the old cali are here they're here oh, nice. we are we are smoking absolutely fantastic wood in this country but still when i was at the barn down this weekend they were saying yeah it's as good as cali and I'll hold my hand up and say, it's not. I have smoked many, many weeds in California that UK weed is as good as. Mm. But the professionals doing it in a professional surrounding, professional outfits, mm. their cannabis is better than ours. The, a lot of the stuff I smoked in Mendocino County was... Was it? Out of the, oh, I got some keen lime pie from Madrone uh, in Mendocino County. I couldn't review it because it was that good. I couldn't put it down. I couldn't put it down. I was just one, next, next, <laughs> next, next. It was absolutely fantastic. But talking about street level weed in the UK, we're in a really, really sad state of affairs. A very sad state of affairs. It's different to you in my area as well. But what do you mean there? Is it, is it going Well, down around this area, around this area, I have a lot of old chaps, a lot of old people that grow. So I do get a lot of old flavours like your Northern Lights and White Widows and things like that, or AK-47s and, you know, flavours you don't get. But just recently, obviously, a lot of younger people have got into it. And that's obviously what's on the street. Now, all the A's, I did a video the other week talking about A saying, where's it gone? What's happened to his old beautiful bright yellow A's that were fantastic? I said, it's all imported from Spain now. It's all outdoor grown in Spain. You can tell by the, the brownness of the colour of the A's and things like that. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's nowhere near on par as it used to be. Now, a few people commented, which absolutely, they were Bob on. They said the, the reason why the A's isn't what it is nowadays is because it's a 14-week grow. Mm -hmm. and people don't want a 14-week grow. They need to drag the money in. Now, the sorry state of affairs in this country, I lived through rave days, the old illegal rave days, and, you know, your old your old party substances, and they were always fantastic at the start. But when started gangs started getting in and money started getting involved and things like that, it started to deteriorate, and exactly the same is what's happening now in the UK in the street level. It's just dog. Everywhere you go, dog, 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 dog. And people saying that, you know, I'll do it, you cheap and stuff like that. But I think, why? I say, why are you growing cheap weed? Why don't you grow good weed? Take more time, cure it, and sell it for more money. 
Yeah. I said, I don't, I don't understand your logic. You know what I mean? So it's a different market, I think, with a dog. Like, so you got like your free market. You got your um, the old style, which was like your old guys with your hazes and your cheeses and your amnesias and stuff like that. And then yeah, you got your dogs coming and taking over that and stolen a lot of that market share. I think has gone over to the to the dog. Um, and yeah, why would you if you're a young grower? without any skin in the industry and your choice is to grow something that takes you 14 weeks or your choice is to grow a cut of dog that you know is going to be fire yeah i see why they do it i see why it is big well, but it's yeah gross. it's not good for us as the consumer no and i i think in this present time in the uk we've we've surely moved beyond this point of of money being the be all and end all i mean some of the growers obviously we have in a very lucky situation that we get some of the best growers yeah. in the uk the We're people in a privileged who, position yeah we don't have to have yeah. ourselves so we were we were lucky to see the best of the uk if you will but for most people obviously they can't get that yeah and i just feel so sorry because a lot of people you just think that that's cannabis, dog, and importers. They think that's it. And I just think, wow, there's that much out there. It's ridiculous. You know what I mean? But I'm, I'm sure things will pick up. I'm sure things will pick up. It's also COVID times and things are bad. And, it, you know, people are just trying to do what they can to survive. I can understand, you know, it is a survival yeah. situation that people have got themselves in, haven't it, really? I, I, yeah, I think that's, it's always going to be there. I mean, they could legalise tomorrow and you're still going to have shit cheap weed that's been grown badly and the people yeah. that probably end up buying it are, are your younger kids that can't buy yeah. from shops right but yeah the point is yeah the standard should be higher with with street cannabis and and that's that's kind of used against us with legalization as well because they then say that it's bad for you it's dangerous and like, it's still not it's still not killed anyone ever but ever. like what we want is for for your more sort of yeah your your more small Growers of like or, nice, or history. even or even the new the new, or not just the new people, the people like yourself, like me, like you, we want to enjoy what we smoke and <laughs> everybody. I mean, this plant, this is what baffles me and amazes me about this plant. This plant has got that many terpenes. Now, for the people who don't know terpenes, terpenes are your tastes and your smells. There's that many different tastes and smells. This stuff can taste that good. There's a taste for every single person in the world out there. You know what I mean? And that's what blows my mind. This plant has been grown. So if you didn't like the taste of citrus or pinings or this all was something else for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. absolutely insane. It's a marvellous, marvellous plant. It really is. It baffles me every day. It really does. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I got taken around. Uh, Q, someone that used to work at Kew Gardens was was showing us around uh, this this glass greenhouse and inside it was all these different express, all these different plants from nature, and each one of them was like a terpene-driven plant. So like it had a lovely smell. Like one of them smelled like bubble gum, one of them smelled like something else, one of them smelled like something else. And I looked at him and I was like, cannabis can smell like all of these. All like of as you're smelling them, you're like, whoa, these are like all different things in nature, and like within cannabis, it, it all exists for all that terpene. All these terpenes are there. I mean, what other, what other plant? would smell like an orange and taste never mind about smell plants lots of lots of plants smell but they don't taste like it as well you know what i mean it's yeah, yeah. it's it's unbelievable it's unbelievable what about this plant. but i just wish the old ethos of money being in control would would go and people would get back on it because 2016 17 18 what it, it, it was fabulous. The flavours, the flavours that were about were amazing. You know, you had your green poisons and your mangoes and your pineapples. And I mean, it was again, a I golden I'm, era, I think. As what? Like a golden era, I think, for, for us. Yeah, it was definitely. It, it was definitely. Yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt. It were, I wish you'd bring it back. I mean, again, I've got, what have I got? White. I've got plenty of fancy. UK, lovely. Now I got this. People. Oh, yeah. Gelato is a fantastic strain, and people have started to really, really mix it with everything. But the actual gelato strain itself, this is from uh, Skitty Buds, another plug, uh, Skitty Buds. And with the gelato, as soon as I open it, I thought, where, where is that even turning into an old strain? We're yeah. getting 
stuff that's that's mixed with it, yeah. but we're not actually getting the bug. Well, I mean, look at it. It's beautiful. Mm. Again, UK, beautiful colours, beautiful smell. That's got Girl Scout cookies in the heritage somewhere from how that looks. Now, there you go. Here's some stories. This will, this is the difference in past. Now, Girl Scout cookies, things like Durban Poison, things like uh, Girl Scout cookies have changed that much over the years for me. Now, I used to live in uh, South Africa and I've travelled through Transkei where the original Durban Poison was, was created. It was all called, called Red Beard Girl Scout Cookies. Now, mm. Girl Scout Cookies and Durban Poison is nothing compared to the original finos that I saw when I lived in Transkei or travelled through Transkei. Mm. So it's, it's a baffling thing. How, again, the evolving, the evolving plant. I always wonder this. People say this to me all the time, that the, the term cannabis isn't how it used to, or this strain isn't how it used to be. <clears throat> Could it be your like your your memory of it has got no. like a special place in your heart? Do you know what I mean? Like no. holy grail Kush, like I love it so much, but but if I smoked it again, would I love it that much? I as... do know what you're saying. I do know what you're saying, but no, I think it's human human error. I'm gonna say human error, but it's only nature as well. What we do. We are obviously blending, blending, blending. The plants I used to smoke in Africa, the original Swazi Golden, the Malawi Cob and things like that, for one, the original Phenos have gone. Um, so that original plant that I smoked back in, in early 90s is no longer exists. It's gone. Somebody <laughs> might have some... <coughs> excuse me. Somebody might have some original seeds somewhere. But they're but, not like everywhere. You can't get hold of it. Yeah. Well, I still, I still have in in the in my freezer. I still have a full sealed packet. I make it all, made it all myself, and I put like two gram of buds dating back from 2016 now. Oh wow! And they, yeah, and they're all still boop, 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 individually sealed. And one day I'm gonna get them all out, and I'll I will I'll smoke them all and oh, see what they like. You, you, yeah, I, I do think it's got a shelf. Unfortunately, I do that in the next few years, maybe because I think it's got it got a shelf life. Like you'll notice that the 2016 one won't taste as good as it did when you. It frozen, was... I don't know. Frozen though, frozen and airlocked. Mm -hmm. I there's mean, no yeah, reason. You'd think, you'd think there's yeah. no reason for it to cure. It's not curing. It's dormant. Yeah, hopefully, it's it not doing frozen, anything. Yeah, I mean, yeah. They've, they've revived seeds from fucking ancient Egypt. So yeah, and, exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You so, definitely do it I mean, with seeds. Like you could, if you found well, a cannabis seed of, from a thousand I, years ago, probably. Yeah. Would. Well, I have I have lots of old shatters that are in freezers and things, and they're as tasty and smell exactly the same as when I put it in. And I, again, I've got dab in that in in my freezer from 2015, 2016. I'm around yours, mate. I've dabbed everything from that. You, era. You're <laughs> welcome to. You're welcome to. It'll blow your mind. I'm gonna fish. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to do a video. I have to, you have to come down now. I'm going to do a video and get them all out and show you. You know, this this stuff from the bear and the very early packets, his first packets he ever brought out. And he was like, bloody hell, you know what I mean? And there's people now, there's Od 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 Odin's extracts, who, yeah. who I know, I've got his first dabby made, basically. And he says, how, how can you still have it, Denzel? I said, well... I don't, you know, for one, I can't smoke dab nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with it all. Maybe I'll have to give it away as a giveaway or something. No, you've got to uh, keep that. Put it in the museum, mate. There we go. That's one for all you people. If you're not subscribed, I'm going to have to plug myself, Kyle. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to Dr. Dens. We could do that. It could be the one million subscriber giveaway. It's going to be from, from, what, 10 years ago? It'll be legal by then. We'll have it, we'll yeah. have it, won't we? <laughs> You'll be able I'll to. Probably be, I'll be dead by then. <laughs> no, we we'll get there. We'll get there before then. Um, but yeah, it's mad. And and like, it's funny you say that. I still have some of the old CBD extracts because you just don't get around to dabbing it all, right? Like, it's just, it's just no. there and you just... get more before you finish it. So, yeah, yeah. You sit, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 But as I must admit, the stockpiles are dwindling now of lack of reviews and things like that. It is. Uh, Slowly going, slowly going. But yeah, um, I made that decision. So now I've stopped the reviews. I'm basically, I mean, I, I wasn't accepting cannabis from random people anyway. It was only ever like friends and, and people that I knew in the industry. And sometimes I'd see them at events and someone had managed to get something into my hands and, and brilliant. But, but I'm not, 
I've decided to sort of take myself out of that now and, and try and focus more on like just education, still a bit of entertainment. Like when I'm chatting with you, like I want to, I want to shed light on what's going on in this yeah. industry and what people yeah. are doing. Well, again, I think when I, when I, I think you'll do really well doing, going that, that way, Charlie, to be true, because I think when I met you, that you were more medical than you were recreational, weren't mm. you? I mean, and we, I can remember us having a conversation many, many years ago, saying, and they said, are you going to, and you said to me, are you going to come into the medical scene? And I said, I'm not, no. I said, I do, you know, I really follow, I follow the medical scene and I back the medical scene 100%, but people like you can produce it better than I can. Yeah. I'm more about shits and deals, having a laugh, you know what I mean? You've got um, a really good personality for, like, yeah, having a laugh. I still, I've always thought that you're an educator and you just don't know it, but do you know what I mean? You're still you're still teaching people, but you're not focused do, yeah. so much. You're focused more on the, the culture side, right? Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, again, the, I mean, I got into smoking. I do use it medically now for lots of, lots of reasons, but, um, my main reason I use it for is to get off my tits and, uh, and be recreational <laughs> and meet like-minded people like yourself. You know what I mean? That's why I do it. That's why I do it. I love it. I love yeah. it. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, it's an amazing plant, mate. It's brought us together. It's brought, it's brought many, many people in this industry into, um, yeah, into making awesome content. I mean, look at what Strain Canis is doing. Look yeah. at like, some of the newer guys that are coming up. You've got, um, yeah. got Space well, I- Boys. Yeah, and I, I met a, re- a really, really good lad this weekend, RSO, SOS. I saw a picture uh, of him, yeah, on your on your Instagram, yeah. What a fantastic guy, what a re- really, really, again, really nice person, down to earth, just as you come. But he, he was giggling, he come in, obviously, old man, doctor, he comes in, he said, oh, Denzel, and he said, there's a bottle of 500 milligram lean here. He said, if you want a mouthful. I said, a mouthful? I said, what, can I have it? Yeah, I said, well, I'll have it all now. You're gonna have it all now. Go on, man. And I thought, and still, I still, you know, I still love getting off my tits on cannabis. Yeah. I still enjoy getting smashed on cannabis. Um, I'm not gonna lie, during the day now, but it's I'm not gonna go into it, but more medical reasons, I have cut down a hell of a lot, you know. I've had to, I've had to, but yeah. it's 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 a weird plant. I've realized how much I was smoking. Mm. It don't make much of a difference. It just once yeah. we, you know yourself. Once we get to a plateau, you're at a plateau, and you're not moving off that plateau. It don't matter how much you smoke, really. You yeah. could maybe have some three thousand milligram medibles that would blow your trolley. But if you're smoking it, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> if you're smoking it, I don't think you're going to get much higher than what we get. You know what I mean? So yeah, there's definitely a threshold, and like there's certainly ways you can beat it, mate. Like by like you're saying, eating eating the edibles or doing loads of dabs and smoking at the same time, but. You do plateau out at events. Yeah, I smoke yeah. a shit ton more than I smoke yeah. on my own when I'm at an event, yeah. and I'm never—I never feel like I'm like super, super wrecked. Like I've I'm... never, I've never seen you whitey, and you've never seen no. me whitey. You know what I mean? It's, it's very rare that <laughs> at Green Pride, but that's a different story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's part of a wobble, isn't it? That's part of a wobble. Is that? That's what we look for. That's the thing we. A lot of people say, oh, nearly whitey. But I think, oh, you're lucky, you're lucky bastard. I love to whitey. I enjoy your whitey. You know what I mean? That's what I know. Yeah, well, that's what I know. I'm at the pinnacle. I'm whitey. Oh, yeah. Get some more down my head quick. I might start being sick. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I mean, yeah, it's, it's funny. To, yeah, it's and it's fine to, and like, I think morally fine to have that attitude about something that is literally not poisonous, not toxic and can't kill you. So we, we, we live in a society where that's, some people might frown upon words like, oh, I like getting fucked or I, I like getting smashed and things like that. But we live in a society where most people enjoy a tipple of one kind or another. Of something, know? of and something. And even if they... With cannabis, I mean, if you'd have enjoyed alcohol um that much like if we replace cannabis with alcohol for either of us right me 10 years drinking every day sorry 15 years drinking every day you probably 40 years 30 40 years drinking every day no i'm not i won't lie i won't lie i i used to drink a lot when i traveled a lot um but but i'm just talking about the long-term health impacts of if you'd have kept that up to this present day oh yeah versus being a stoner like there's there's not like i'm a healthy guy just on that side of things, do you, I haven't I haven't drunk alcohol, and I'm not exaggerating here. It must be nearly 15 years I didn't touch a drop of alcohol. I don't. Oh, it's yes. not for me. It's not my thing. Yeah. But during lockdown, 
stuck in me, stuck in me uh, yarden, I'll call it a yarden, um, or Le Café Dens, stuck in yeah. Le Café Dens, barbecuing. I started having a cheeky pinot, a little bit of wine and <laughs> things like that. Yeah. And as it's progressed, I'm drinking more and more and more. And as it's progressed, this year, this year, 16 months, me health is deteriorating. Oh, no. So yeah, it yeah. just shows. And that's yeah. why I'm like that. No, I'm so stopping good. it again. I'm stopping it again. I've, I've just been to the barn dance this weekend. I had a bit of a tipple. Not a lot. Just one bottle of wine. And then, like I say, I'm still a bit rough today. Still feeling it today. That's what you said when you got on the call, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I just want to like bring back, if you don't mind mentioning it, like just to make sure people are aware. So you mentioned a little while ago you stopped smoking in the day. It's more the actual smoke. It's not cannabis that's making you feel bad mentally or anything. Oh, is not, it? no, Physical not. It, I, am, I, I haven't stopped smoking during the day. I've just cut down. Now, I'm not going to lie. I used to smoke 20 joints a day. 20 yeah. joints a day, which is with, with tobacco, with tobacco. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And, and Tyler for years, Tyler for years, I said, Denzel, not go back here on the head, not go back here on the head. And now I'm not going to lie. I've been to the doctors. I've been, I will talk about it. I've been to the doctors and they, they've come back and said, it's nothing to do with your smoking. Mm. They said, it's nothing. I said, well, you know, I, I, I don't, I've never lied to the doctors. I've always told them I smoke cannabis. I said, I, I don't take, uh, that's why I don't have opiates and, things like that for me for me off and yeah. so forth if you um, ever, I, just to interject sorry to if you ever see Den and I've spent time with him and you see him walking about for a day like he's had a motorcycle accident right I nearly lost it promptly knee down you know what I mean now the doctors were pumping me you know shitty pharmaceutical drugs opiates for many years luckily for me I know what I'm into and I put a lot of them in the bag but I realised that cannabis starting to rain in Wonderland. I realised that uh, cannabis works as good as any of them uh, opiates. So I just thought, well, why would I use opiates when I can still use my cannabis, still enjoy myself? Yeah. And it works medical. Because I also, I mean, I have RBS. I have slight, slight bit of Crohn's. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have hiatus. <laughs> I've got lots of things. But it all helps. But no, the, the recent medical things is... Yeah, it's strange you've come back to me and they said you've got long COVID. I said, what do you mean I've got long COVID? I said, as far as I know, I've never had COVID. They said, well, you've got scarred lungs, you've got scarred chest, and your blood oxygen levels are dropping low, as though you're halfway up a mountain. So I can be sat like this, normal away, and then I'll just go, and I can't breathe right. And I'm just, and I'm... Can't get me breath. Can't get me breath. And then it, that lasts a minute or two. And me, I've got one of them things you put on your finger. Mm. And I look look at my oxygen levels, and they're like down at ninety and stuff like that, which it you should be up at you know ninety four and above. And it's just weird. But they haven't put it down to anything. To I said, could it be anything to do with cannabis? And good on me, doctor. He did say he said nothing. No. He said if you were seventy year old, and you were coming in with this. I'd agree. He said, but you're not. He said, you're 50 and you're, you, you know, you, you, your body's still quite good. You're still wow. in good health. You know they what I mean? They didn't even point out, like, so they didn't pick out the tobacco and say that. They're saying no, that they didn't even like say we're that. We're seeing other patients and, like, that's what it looks like, long COVID. So no, my, my lungs yeah. are fine. My chest is fine. Yeah. But I've got a scar in two places on them. Now, he says it's not down to smoking. He said if it were down to smoking and smoke inhalation, you'd be different. It'd be a different thing. It'd look different. different Yeah, yeah. So, no, it's not even down to that. But, kids, the back is not good. (laughs) I mean, yeah. It's horrible. I want to stop it so much. I really do want to stop it. I don't even... I, I sit and smoke a joint. You've just seen me have a joint there. And I smell tobacco. Even though I only put very little in. It stinks. It's horrible. It's not a nice thing. So if you can do it without, <clears throat> please do it without. Yeah. Tyler, Tyler's been right for many years. I've never <laughs> let him know that, but he's oh. been right for many years. <laughs> I've always, I've, I used to smoke with Baki as well. For the first eight years of me smoking, it was 15 spliffs a day, basically, because uh, you're getting pissed on. <laughs> Oh, that's an angry cloud. I don't know how long we've got left on the Zoom call because I think you only get 40 minutes in. Um, we probably we've had a got... good do. I don't know how long we've been going, but I'm going to have to make a, a quick <laughs> move inside. Good. Get yourself under a bit of cover quickly. 
It's Otherwise, you're, down uh, like you're your phone or your laptop. You're, you're probably fine, mate. Just sit there in the rain. <laughs> sit at bar. I'll sit at bar. Hold on. <laughs> Going over to, uh, yeah. Well, to, at least you know it's real, people. This is always real. <laughs> He's like not showing you guys his like swimming pool and his tropical like <laughs> his tropical paradise <laughs> in the angles. So that you just... I'm still not under there. If I sit at bar, I'm still not under there. Right. Let me get in a spot. Let me get in a spot. Here we go. I'm under the balcony now, so jobs are good. Yes. Jobs are good. <laughs> jobs are good. I thought that actually because it was raining down here and I was chatting to Simpa. And uh, he's up Durham way, isn't he? And I, um, yeah. and, I saw, and I saw it was still bright and sunny, and I was thinking, oh, you're lucky there. We've got fucking rainstorm down here. <laughs> no, it's saying it's coming today. We've been so lucky, though. I mean, you've been had floodings and all sorts, haven't you? I mean, yeah, we've, we've been it. down south. It has been a crazy wonderland, isn't it? It's wonderland. It's always glorious in wonderland. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I saw on the news there's a, a station down in London, Pudding Mill Station, and uh, there's a video of it, and it looks like someone's filled a swimming pool or someone's made a London Underground themed swimming pool. It's like the signs that are normally above your head are like that high out the water, and you're just looking down from the top of a pair of stairs. I should be able to put it. I'll, I'll superimpose it so our viewers can see it. But crazy, and it's because they've been building on floodplains in London since 2009, apparently. It just shows. It shows. I mean, look at Europe flooding. You've got fires in nor in Northern America. You've got earthquakes and uh, earthquakes and tornadoes and so forth in Central America. You've uh, fires, earthquakes and volcanoes in Southern America. Yeah. Mount Etna's erupting again. So the world's on the change. We're on a shift. We're on a shift. It's, a it's only weird. nature. It's only nature. We are, <laughs> we are COVID to the world, aren't we, really? So it's... <laughs> You know, fucking hell, that is deep. That is a deep insight. Yeah, I mean, I can't disagree with you. We're not, we're not, we're not great, uh, a great force on this planet as far as forces go, to be fair. But, um, no. but hopefully, we can do our bit by consuming cannabis, by, by being supporting hemp as the, um, the, the problem solver here because it can actually really help environmentally, can't it? If people, well, the thing that, the thing that saddens me. One of the first cars that was ever built in the 1920s was made out of hemp. Mm. Also run, not not on, um, not run by. I think I've ragged it. I'm <laughs> going to try and get back out again. It's a nice spot. Um, yeah, I am. Um, the, it, I'm trying to think, it weren't run on petrol anyway, it certainly weren't run on petroleum. Now, mm. the sad thing about our society, we're going to get into some mad, mad talk, we're not even talking about cannabis. Um, the sad thing is that whatever it was run on wasn't money, you know, they didn't make a lot of money from it. So, and also, M steel was a massive thing coming into, coming into fruition. So, the, the M cars, Again, weren't viable. Yeah, weren't viable. They the wanted to make industry, money. They wanted to make so, money. Yeah, there's a few industries that stood to lose from from hemp, so it was never in its interest to our interest to mass adopt it in the same way. But hopefully, we'll reclaim that now, or we are reclaiming that a little bit. But but it needs to go much further. Is it is it brightening up, or is the rain coming down still? I think there's a tornado coming in, but we'll we'll live through that. We'll live through that. <laughs> it's just going to go. <laughs> <laughs> we do it live. <laughs> You'd be like, I told you I weren't in. Told you I weren't in the UK, mate. You don't get. I know. I know. Did you see there was a bloody tornado in in London again? London and Durham. What's that about? How are you getting tornadoes in the UK? <laughs> We're changing, mate. We're changing. That's what's going on. That's what's going on. Sure, up you. your houses. Yeah, you know, um, but yeah, look, I don't know how long we've got because I haven't got the premium Zoom, so I think we're going to get cut off this meeting in a minute anyway, mate. Yeah, but, yeah, but, um, not a problem. This has been really fun. I really wanted to chat with you, mate, on camera for the Pleasure. YouTube channel. I want to say to all of our followers and subscribers, 
go follow Dr. Dens. You should be already. If you're not following Dr. Dens, then, then I don't know why. So go and give Dr. Dens a follow and check out his videos. It he gives you more coverage of the UK industry because he gets to go to things that I don't and vice versa. And then when we're out abroad, we're usually together uh, yeah. at uh, Spanabai or uh, Amsterdam. We need, to, make, we need to do Amsterdam, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> There's not many people in this world call it Spanabai, is there? <laughs> <laughs> That's an in joke. <laughs> it, yeah. yeah but, um, but yeah, mate, Dens, thanks for coming on. And... Absolute pleasure, Tyler. Always a pleasure napping with you. We always have a good natter. It's uh, again a pleasure, sir. A pleasure. Oh, Any coming shout out again. before you go? I know you've done a couple. Anyone you want to shout out? Everybody in the cannabis scene, the whole world, stay happy and chilled and keep that love out there, people. Stay happy. That's all we've got to do. As long as we all keep smiling, we all keep loving each other. It'll be a fantastic place to live on this planet. So, big shout to every single one of you out there. Big shout yeah. out. Yeah. Oh, thanks, that, yeah. Top man, Tyler. Top thanks man. for watching, everyone. Look, it's been another awesome conversation. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, and I'll see you in another one very soon. Thanks for watching. Keep talking. Oh,